<laughs> Actually, let's start out. Why don't you tell everybody about your butt plug? <laughs> the butt plug story. <laughs> tell me all about right. your butt plug. All right, all right. Let me go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, honestly, you want me to read the message or I'll just quote it from memory. It said, um... No, no, I'll go ahead and read the message from my friend who gave me permission to to go ahead and, and tell everybody oh, this story. permission, bro? Oh, shit. Thank as you, long friend. as I did not say where he was from and his name. So, um, thank, thank, thank you, you friend. Thank you, friend of Dave. What's up, kid? <laughs> Dude, I can't. Yes, you can. All right, all right. What happens when you lose a butt plug? Dave? He says, uh, he writes to me, he goes, um, <clears throat> uh, Dave, what's up, man? Anytime that someone starts with your name, you know it's it's good, all right? So I'm like, not much, man. What are you up to? He says, you you around anybody? Question mark. Don't tell anybody my secret. <laughs> I said, nope, just me in my basement, which is creepy, by the way. But <clears throat> it's not that creepy. He says. <laughs> Remember the advice that you gave me about two years ago? I hate it when people say that to me. Because I'm like, you know, it's probably not good advice anymore. <laughs> that my wife and I introduced butt plugs into our relationship. An experiment with them. <clears throat> oh. To put a hat to Dave. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm calling you. Because you probably don't want this on text message or proof that this has been written. He said, thank you. <laughs> so I pick up the call. It's like, all right, well, man, what's up? And he goes, so, uh, you know, just letting you know, my wife loves the butt plug. We totally love it. It's amazing. And one day I was searching and found out that, you know, guys can use them too. I'm like, Duh. I mean, <laughs> surprised that you had to search that, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> One size fits all. To me goes, so <clears throat> experimenting it with it, my wife's gone. I'm like, okay, that's never <laughs> a good thing when experimenting when your wife's gone. But keep going. He says, I, uh, I lost the butt plug. And I'm like, so go find it. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I lost it in my asshole. <laughs> What do you do when you lose a butt plug in your asshole? <laughs> All right, honestly, if I if somebody asked me that question, my answer would be like, "Go take a shit." But that's probably not the right Bro, advice. Uh, I was like, <laughs> trying not to laugh. I mean, I'm really trying not to laugh. I'm like, "What are you doing right now?" Like, and he's like, "I'm in the crab position," and I'm like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "So." Put me on speakerphone so you don't have to. He says to me, he goes, <laughs> he puts me on speakerphone and puts me down. And when he bends over to puts me down, you hear a boink right off the floor. <laughs> so, so that's what you do is you put your friend on speakerphone and it takes care of itself. <laughs> it fucking dropped out. Oh my God. I could not laugh any harder. I was like, bro, you okay? He goes, yeah, besides the blood, I'm fine. <laughs> well, you lost my shit, bro. Dude, oh my god, man! Too, apparently, well, that's Holy impressive, bro. Holy shit, man! I can't. <laughs> that's impressive. You're kind of like, you're kind of like um, the Jesus of the butt plug situation. You just got to call upon the name of Dave. <laughs> and whoop. He's like, what would have happened if I didn't get it out? I'm like, well, <laughs> call nine one one. You would have, you would have got to know the doctors and nurses a little bit more personal than you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! All right, Mark, I'm done. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I was I'm waiting. Ever since I got to Cracker Barrel last night to hear that. Story. Um. I got when I got into Cracker Barrel because I was walking the dog. I handed the phone to my wife and I was like, "Read that message." <laughs> so she was like, "Oh." Then my kids were like, "What?" I was like, um, "You guys, you don't want to know, but um, it's really gross." And I started kind of like outlining the details to it, and they're like, "Stop, Dad! Dad, don't tell us! Dad, Dad, don't tell us!" Dude, it's it's. I was like. Got off the phone with him. I'm like, I have to wait 24 hours before I call him and ask him if I can use this. 
24 hours. That's all I needed. It was like 24 hours. Can I get 24 hours before he realizes it's not an embarrassing moment? Yeah. So I waited until Monday morning (laughs) to call him. It was like, hey, man, this story is too good. I can't, I cannot not tell the story. And he's like, I know. I was afraid of that. And I was like, I won't use your name and I won't tell you where you're from. And nobody will ever know. I was like, I won't even tell Mark. It's between him and I. Or between you and I. And he's just like, Whoever you right. are out there, I already know who you are. <laughs> no doubt he's listened to this today. Whoever <laughs> you are, I know you. I'm just kidding. Oh, um, my God. Best story okay. ever. So that reminds me a lot of Ja Morant right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not, not the best time. For that. <laughs> but yo, I, I saw Richard Jefferson um, talking about it with Malika Andrews. And it was like incredible. He's just like talking about having the conversation with his kids and they're like his kids could be like why would he do that like i don't know that's what my kids asked like <laughs> i was explaining with like jaw i was like well you know that guy who got in trouble with the gun it cost him 40 million dollars yeah yeah he wasn't just enough did it again and they're like why <laughs> what do you say in that moment you're like i don't know i don't understand maybe honestly bro maybe there's something wrong like with his mentals. Well, let's just be honest, man. We talked about this. I mean, we were right up front honest well, about yeah, we it got concerned about another Gilbert Arena situation. We did. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that when you're seeing it, you're looking at it, you're like, uh, well, a young man with a gun, with a weapon, uh, flaunting it around, uh, dancing with it, doesn't really understand the issue with it, right? So... When we saw it the first time, I was like, I, I'm concerned about job ja because if he doesn't understand how big of a deal this is, then it's over. So he goes and meets him, the commissioner. The commissioner obviously thinks Jaw gets how big of a situation it is. A and Jaylen I'm telling Rose you guys, it, it was a lenient, a lenient suspension that he was given. This was not a hard suspension. This was lenient. It reminds me a bit of like if you get like arrested and they put you on probation, right? Like they're saying, hey, if you get arrested again... You're going to get in trouble for the first offense and this offense at the same time. Do you think that's what's going to happen here? So they're going to double up as a suspension? Dude, I, I think it's, I think, I think the only way that the commissioner looks at he can get to him at this moment, uh-huh. 80 game suspension, bro. 80 game suspension. That's I, I season, think, bro. I think he, I think he may look at it like, like, okay, you know what? We'll give him a 40 game suspension. As long as he stays out of trouble. But this is, again, on the Memphis Grizzlies. And I want to make sure that everybody understands this. Because the Memphis Grizzlies had an opportunity to take him out the rest of the season. But they decided not to. If you had taken him out the rest of the season, made sure he went to rehab, made sure he had all the other issues that he was under control, this wouldn't have happened. A lot of things wouldn't have happened. But, yeah, you're right. This specifically would not have happened. And I look at this as a organizational fumble. If they had taken care of it right, Morant would have seen what was the, the issue with it. He would have never, ever had the situation that he's currently under. And it makes me sad because it Morant is one of those young men that I see a huge future with. I, I, I felt like he could be somebody in the NBA that we see in, in, in 15 years down the road. But how many times have we seen an unbelievable athlete make stupid mis- decisions and derail their careers? And, and I think about the type of of decision this was and i almost line it up with latrell spreewell when latrell spreewell choked out pj carlissimo carlissimo thank you so this is in my opinion the same exact situation you got under hands yes there wasn't a violent act about hands around neck but this was a slap on the wrist just after or this was a big mistake just after a slap on the wrist Mm -hmm. like to me there's going to be a a repercussion because you know, Adam Silver feels insulted, incredibly insulted right now. Yeah, I mean, I do when I get, I feel insulted when I get lied to. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, probably like, you know what? I'm done with this. I gave him an opportunity. And two months later, he took advantage of that. So what happens this next time? He's going to learn what? Six months later, he's going to do it again. No, it, you got to. He, you if he had been suspended through the end of the season, he would not have made this mistake. You have to suspend him. In a situation where, like, honestly, at this point, he, Adam Silver has to cover his own ass. 
he can't be looked back and said like, oh yeah, this was a habitual problem. And the reason was, is because he was surrounded by enablers, including the commissioner. Like somebody has yeah. to be the adult in the situation and say like, no, there's a punishment for this. And it sucks because, I mean, I was talking to, to my wife and kids about this on the drive last night. And it was like, why is it that a rapper can put, show a gun in a video and it doesn't matter? But then a basketball player does, and it does matter, and a big deal. And it really comes down to one thing, corporate sponsorships. You know, like when you're an independent artist, you can do anything you want. But when you have the city's biggest companies, you know, behind your team, then you're in a spot where your actions reflect a lot more than just yourself. And each of the situations, like the question about like how he had the gun, why he had the gun, who he was with where he was, um, you know, what time it was, all these things start coming into questions. And then this last video, like just like driving around in a car, a, a, a car that's moving with somebody taking a live. Yeah. It becomes Man, this really, is... really confusing. Like, and because it almost seemed like he wanted to be seen. And, and it seems weird. To think about because how could you really want to? And I gotta I gotta stop real quick and shout out everybody in the chat. Tanner, Zare, Smitsta, Hell yeah, man. Sammy Dog, Carson, what's up guys? Thanks <clears> for joining <throat> us. But like almost like okay, you think that um losing forty million dollars is gonna change me, right? <laughs> it's not gonna change me. I'm still the same me. That's what it seemed like to me. Like I'm not like it seemed like a reaction specifically to the news that he lost $39 million. Yeah. Because it was like, wow, everybody's sitting there thinking, wow, he must have learned his lesson. Watch mm. this. Watch this. You Money can't change me. And like, I think a lot of people think money will change you when you get the money. But what about when you lose the money? Will it change you? And he's like, yeah. neither one of these is going to make a difference. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting carried away. Thank you. No, I, I, was, I, was, listening, I was listening to Put Little Babe for a second. Yeah, you're good. I was listening to Little Baby, um, uh, the rapper Little Baby. I like rap music, but I'm more like listening to rappers that are incredibly gifted businessmen talk. Little Baby is one of those guys. Um, and I, I look at it and I'm, I'm listening to Little Baby talk and he, he's basically like, listen, the rap game and the gangster game is completely different in the aspect of back in the day you know, people were and what he little baby's doing was using the rap game to get out of the drug world. He's saying that people that are like these rich kids now are, are using their money to get into the gang world. And I, I don't know if I necessarily like understood what he was saying, but I'm watching Ja Morant and it's like, he's here. He is, as an athlete, basketball athlete. And he's acting like he is a rapper. And it's concerning, you know, like, I don't, you're right. I, I, I don't know how to explain it except for, I just feel bad for the young man because he has not had an opportunity to be taught that this is not the way that you go about with your business. And as much as I want to say that, uh, you know, well, he could have had the, you know, proper upbringing, like, I'm sorry, at what point in anyone's life is carrying a weapon around an okay thing? I mean, I, I get it. I was born in the 80s and, and in the 90s, driving around Oklahoma, we would see, you know, rifles um, in the back of people's um, uh, pickup trucks in the windows, you know, and it was just normal stuff like that. But we're not talking about the 90s anymore. You know, we're talking about the 2020s where all these young kids are connected to every single social media app ever. And then on top of that, we've had all these gun gun shootings in America and it's, it's, it's insane. So of course, there's going to be spotlights on jaw for this. Of course, that people are going to look at this and be like, he's disrespecting the kids in America right now. And it, to me, it's just not, it's not something that I'm okay with at this point. Yes, everybody has their own right to make decisions, but let's just be honest. If Job wants to go down this road, he's going to be, you know, he he's worth eighty million dollars right now, guys. But he could have been worth, I mean, so much more. But he keeps on making mistakes. So instead of being worth right. you know three hundred, five hundred million dollars in his in his course of his contract, he's going to be worth maybe eighty million dollars. The the crazy thing is, and this kind of answers your question, Carson, a little bit. But what's up, Sammy? How long until he's out of the league? Um, 
dude, it's his decision at this point. This this next suspension is his last suspension before he gets an insane amount. And my, I asked my kids, how much do you think he lost from the first one? Um, got some wild numbers, right? One of them seventy four million is what I think is my number. So one of them said five billion dollars, just to throw it out there, right? And I was like, no, no, not that much. But then I started thinking about it. He was on track to become a billionaire before he was 30. Okay. 35. Yeah. Mm, probably 30, bro. With, you think with, so? Yeah, yeah. If with a Nike got... contract coming out mm-hmm. soon? Yeah. yeah. So if he could hit a You're billion right. dollars before 30, you should be able to turn that billion into $2 billion at some point. Like, it might actually have cost him, if he doesn't get this shit together, it might cost him $5 billion. It might already cost him the chance at becoming a billionaire. I no, before 100%. he's forty, you know, 100%. because it's really, 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 Listen, really crazy. The only way for him to revive it, or re, restart his career is first of all being traded like Latrell Spiro was. Get him out, get him to a big city, get him to a new place, let him play his career out there. Because the reality is, is that um, we've seen this happen before. Once you get a, a face, once you get somebody that you think about Gilbert Arenas, and I, I forget who the other guy was in the locker room where they're like pulling their weapons on each other. Yeah, you I know, mean, I don't even know his name because I don't, I don't think he. He, got, he was never played again after that. It was, it was Gilbert Arenas was a, like a hundred million plus athlete, dollar athlete, and he just it was gone, and he earned that shit. He wasn't, it wasn't like given to him. He earned that shit the hard way, and then it was just gone. It was gone, and and like, was, just insane. They had to change an entire organization's name. You know, like I think it was maybe it had been started being the process of being changed before that. But I think I think they were the Wizards back when Jordan played for them in the two early two thousands. Oh, so they it, were. You're right. So bullets yeah. had been changed. Yeah, but it okay. was it definitely touched a sensitive nerve. Say, so, I mean, same with what's going on right now with with Memphis. Like, guys, think about this. Memphis has some of the worst gun violence in anywhere in the country. This is not a small deal to have a young superstar endorsing guns. And it's not gun violence, but it's sad. Yeah. I mean, it's sad. Memphis is one of the most difficult places to, to grow up. And then like you're saying, you have somebody who doesn't need it. They have all the money in the world and they're glamorizing a really sad lifestyle. So again, it's, it's just you, Sammy. It just sucks, man. It sucks seeing how a single player can take such a negative spotlight and put it right on the NBA. Like there's so much good happening on right now in the NBA. LeBron, the seven and eight seeds are oh, are let's talk about the good stuff, bro. <laughs> and it's just insane to me that well that it's stuck like this. And and I want to throw it before we go talk about the good stuff. Yeah. Um I have this note right here, guys. Bob Myers, man. Bob let's Myers. Talk about Bob Myers. All right. Bob so Bob Myers, Myers just came out and I was listening to Warriors before we got on. Bob Myers came out and said he right doesn't know if he's going to be back he's going to take a couple weeks in june after the decision and the reason is is because he's so attached cop out so attached to these players in the core of these players next steps are going to be difficult and my point is that he can't make decisions that's the problem that's always been his problem is not going to want to get rid of any of these players and he knows that he has to tear this team apart because you can't pay 62 million dollars to wiggins and pool you just can't 62 million dollars is not something you can pay to these guys and now that's 62 million dollars you got all these other contracts that are up it's important that that i i look at this and i'm saying he really just put himself in the box now whether or not myers will take the job and and blow apart the team or not that's a whole new thing but i'm looking at this guys and i'm saying how are you going to take apart this team what are you going to have to take apart are you going to keep curry are you going to keep clay are you going to keep those two and maybe one other big um big time uh player and then get rid of everybody else but here's the problem who's going to take wiggins who's going to take pools contract the 31 million dollars plus each year so who's going to take those contracts well i got it you're gonna to have to trade one of your better players and attach those guys or one of those guys to that better player. It's the only way because the reality is, is that you're not going to be able to get in a situation where you're going to be able to trade. And on top of that, how many teams are going to be able to really cough out $70 million? There's no, not no, a the lot. New CBA, bro. 
under the new CBA. The, the there's... number that can and the number who will now just became very different. Very little. So now you're sitting in a spot where Bob Myers not, might not be able to trade any of these guys yeah. except out. for Clay, Steph, and Draymond. And you have to keep everybody else. Do you want to be the face of that organization after you trade all those guys? What would you do? Let's say you're Bob Myers' situation and you you will not walk away. Okay. So then how do you... First thing I do? Yeah. Is I, I I take a playbook out of Danny Ainge's playbook, and he went and got like five first round picks for Gobert. Oh, uh, you're talking about go Danny Ainge. I think what I'm talking about is I'm talking about Dude, that, Myers that's saying that's I'm going to trade starting off with Draymond Green, who is my least valuable asset. I'm going to see what my max amount of picks I can get for him for maybe two, maybe three, whatever it is, right? And then I'm going to go trade Clay. I'm going to see what I can get. And Bro, after I trade Clay. Why not just keep Clay and stuff? Because you can't. Why not? Financially, you can no longer keep Clay and stuff because you can't trade the other guys. You're going to have to show the other guys that they're valuable in order to trade them. And during you, that time. Okay, you're saying you are saying you have to trade Draymond and Clay because you signed and Steph. Pool and stuff? Dude. Tear the fuck out of that team, bro. You have to, man. Listen to me. Listen to me. How are you going to be able to survive? How are you going to be able to survive if you decide that you're going to go with no draft picks, no way of getting any guys to come to your team from the off year? You can't. There's nothing you can do. You're handicapped with that cap space. The only way to do is tear it down. Now, if you get rid of those three guys, you're under your salary cap number, and you have eight or nine draft picks for the future. And then the, as these other guys are getting good and you have a chance to understand, is Poole going to be that player that we paid him for? No? Well, now we got to sit here and cough up his shit. That sucks for us. You like Poole has no tradable assets, man. There, who's going to pay anything for Poole? Who's going to pay like anything for Wiggins? There's no way of getting rid of these guys with the new CBA. The only way to get rid of these guys is by trading the t better guys – and hopefully you can sit there and say, I'm under the cap level, so at least I can have an opportunity to rebuild over the next five to six years. Because otherwise, you're going to be sitting here in two years, and your team's going to be so fucked, you have nothing left. You have nothing left. You're going to be you know sitting there Bob being Myers like, well, like, we bro. could have had a pick or two, but no, we didn't trade any of our players. Because Steph's so old. Clay's getting there. He's already had is issues injury-wise. And Draymond Green is a head case. You got to get rid of these guys while you, they have value right now. He's like, um, that's why he's having a hard time with it because he knows he knows what I'm saying is right. I mean, bro, he's you like can't sit there and say I'm attached to these players. That's why I don't want to come back. Like, if you know that all of them are going to be back next year, you know, like you might be able to keep Clay because of his age. But man. I say you you start back over, man. You you just say, Steph, I'll try to get you someplace you can go. But you know, there's a very few teams that have the draft capital that we need. Oh, I mean, it's they, it's a strip down. Bob Myers is like your friend that lost his butt plug, bro. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you know, you know. When I'm it's... just saying it's like, like how, how like, could you could you imagine right like um. All right, so uh, look, everybody gives Jerry Krause a ton of shit, and he deserves it for what happened with like the Bulls. But they won six championships, right? In the yeah. end, the reason they, like they won six championships was because he knew you don't trade Jordan and Pippen so that you can extend Horace Grant and you know, and um, I don't know, Steve Kerr or John Paxson yeah. or whatever. Like, well, Bob Myers built this team around the the old CBA. Yeah, but you know what? That's Bob the Myers danger of it. Didn't fucking build this team. It was, this well, was a I'm, Jerry West team. Jerry yes. West was but, the guy but, that said uh, when he I went say, to he went to the ownership and said, "If you do not draft Clay Thompson, I quit." He forced him to pick Clay Thompson. Bob Myers wanted some other motherfucker. Bob Myers picked James Wiseman. Bob Myers is a. That's what I'm saying. Player. This is Bob Myers' mess. Like, like you can say anything else you want, but who else gave Poole? 140 million dollars who else gave you know uh, wiggins that massive contract who else gave i mean we can go down the list 
Yeah. This is on this is on Bob Myers, and he's got to clean uh, up his own mess. But the problem is, I don't he think won't. he's going to want to clean up his no, own mess. I, no. Like this is this is to me like the Warriors fans are going to be so pissed with whoever has to tear down this this organization. And I really like I said, I hope it's this year because next year he might be able to get a pick or two for Steph. Because everybody's going to recognize how valuable picks are, and they're going to be like, "Fuck trading picks anymore." You know. Yeah, I mean, we have to build players. That's crazy talk, but you're probably right. At least there's a risk. I mean, and and if you want to roll the dice and go for it, go for it, man. But the reality is, is that your payroll is going to be so insane. And then you have no capability of signing any free agents. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't know, man. Just quit. Just be like... (laughs) This is Let not somebody else clean anymore. this shit up. This I'm going to go not. be a GM for a team that can appreciate. This is depressing me, all the bad decisions I made, so I'm out. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Uh, so, what, game one. We got game one tonight. Yeah, dude. 7-2 or 7-1 and 8-1, right? Or 8-2. They're both eight, not two. playing today. Who's playing tonight? I'm pulling it up right now. Um, that would be the West. Lakers in Denver, eight thirty yeah. Eastern. All right, I know there's a lot of people that want Denver out there for their Oklahoma City fans. Oh, really? I know. I I heard I heard I Oklahoma City that. fan the other day was like, I'm rooting for Denver. I hate um, Lakers so much. Okay. I'm rooting for Denver. I can see but that. I like I lived in Denver, and I know how people like look at us in Oklahoma City <laughs> as it's like. We're in Denver, and below us is Oklahoma City, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't like that. I would rather, I would rather so root for, for the, the Lakers. Lakers. I'm going for Lakers, man. What about you? All right. So when you were living in Denver, Russ put up that game where he <sighs> triple double fifty, baby, fifty point triple double. He earned the triple double first one since Roberts, Oscar Robertson. But but he also <clears throat> that pass from Stephen Adams for that deep three. He knocked game the Nuggets out over. of the playoffs that game. And the fans gave him a standing ovation. I've never seen that happen before. A team gets knocked out of the playoffs as passionate as that Nuggets fan base was. And they gave him a fucking standing ovation. So for that, I'm hoping the Nuggets win the championship because those fans have class. Now, they might think we don't have class. That's their mistake. But that's in the end, they've got fucking class. It reminded me of a classic Madison Square Garden game where... Yeah. LeBron goes out and puts up the double nickel or whatever. Something happens and the fans are just like tip of the hat to you, sir, because that was a performance. And here we love great performances. And that's what Russ did. And, and you know, kudos to the Nuggets fan for recon- fans for recognizing something special when you see it. That's it. Well, what, I, what about the other I mean, one? Bro? I, you, I, Boston, Miami. What you got for that? Oh, I'm going underdogs on both, bro. I'm just I want to see an eight seven seed championship game, man. Okay. I know it sounds weird, but no, I like fine. the idea. I like the idea of of play in teams making it all the way. Like to me, that proves to what I've been saying and all of our other listeners that have been echoing what we're saying is that the play in game is way more valuable than anybody's really willing to recognize. Yeah. And we're seeing it firsthand what's what's happening and it's exciting bro i want more of it i want to get into it i want to see what happens when uh, a team in 7 8 seed all of a sudden will make it because then anybody that's a 7 8 seed or you know a 10 9 seed all of a sudden they have this belief man they're like i can do this we can do this great bro do you think it's the starting point for a, an expansion or do you think we're, we're how much? How many? Th- this is the problem about expanding it past it is right what it is right now. Okay, so um, if we expand it any more, then Dallas would have made it right, and mm-hmm. the next team would have made it. So there's only what six teams in the NBA that wouldn't make it. I don't know, man. That just seems like it would be so. Really, in the first the the regular season would just be like a seeding tournament instead of like an actual. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess if, if you, if, hmm, I mean, here's the thing is, is how much is the NBA willing to change their direction? You know what I'm saying? Like, are, are they willing to take it and say, we want to create a playoff environment 
um, in this middle of the um, season playoff way is their way of figuring out, is this going to be something that works for the future? Because I, I'm curious on that, because is it going to be something that a 10 or a 11 seed could all of a sudden surprise everybody and knock some teams out? I, I don't know, man. Like the NBA is proving that they, they're willing to change with the times and what that means for the future of it is, is truly spectacular. I think that there's a lot that's going to, to happen that are, that's going to surprise us all. No doubt, bro. Um, big game by Jason Tatum. Um, you know, I didn't get to see much basketball over the last few days because I've been in the process of moving. So that's been unfortunate, but I'm back locked in in a good spot to watch the next few games. So, hey, OKC Tanner, uh, let's quick talk question about that. for you. I'm pulling up some yeah. stuff right now. Go ahead, Dave. I, I was going to say, it's like the, um, um, the lottery is tonight. Um, at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. And Mark and I will be on here, or at least I'll, I'll be on here um, watching it live. But yeah. I have not heard that, you know, we've moved up to fourth. If if we did, um, I, I would be yet. I would be screaming my ass off. But as far as as far as there's there's no definitely no proof that that's uh, um, that's happened yet. All right. So let's talk about who we have the top. um Six, according to Kevin O'Connor's big board here. Anthony Black at number six from Arkansas. Mm. Isaiah Thomas, overtime elite. I love Anthony Amen Black. Thomas, overtime elite. Those are. Do you do you like the Thomas brothers, bro? Um, you know, honestly, I'm not as familiar with them as I should be before I even give an opinion. Um, and then you got Brandon Miller at two, Victor at one, and he had Scoot Henderson at three. So if we moved up to four. What would you want to do? Would, did I name the person, or would maybe like a Taylor Hendricks or a Jarris Walker? Well, maybe Ken if we Whitmore? moved it to fourth, um, yeah. for me, I'm looking at it like Scoot Henderson would be my number one um, choice player. He doesn't seem like he'll be there at four. He's probably going to be at number two or number three. I mean, I don't again, see him getting to four. I just don't. Um, I and, and I hear you. I don't see him getting to four either. But um, you know. It's so Sam it's Presti, and we've seen crazier things happen. So Victor's gone. I think Brandon Scooter's Miller goes gone. too. Brandon Miller's gone. So those three guys are off the table. Well, Brandon I, I, Miller, I think Scooter Brandon Miller goes too. Victor. I think Miller goes too. He's getting too much steam right now. Um, too many teams are talking about him um, at two. So I feel he goes Dude, number two. That's lying. why. That's just, why. They're, what's they're that? Bluffing. They're all bluffing right now on Brandon Miller. I mean, that's the thing. It's, there's like, so much uh, shit he falls going like, on in draft like, talk shit late part of the um, lottery i'm probably wrong i here, here's the thing is if it's not scoot henderson i'm totally frank's with frank right it. here trade back man you know get an extra draft pick for another year or two um get to I like six or seven value exactly like what you're saying like around seven eight nine yeah like, like get gets that mid number a team will yeah. overpay for that pick big time you know so you don't even you say if you get top four don't use it because there's no Josh. No, no, I'm saying draft. if if Scoot is available, if Scoot oh, okay. somehow slips down the list and somebody picks up Amir Thompson or something like that ahead of him, right. then I could see Sam Presti picking Scoot. But if he's not available, like I, I don't. There's three guys in this pick uh, this draft class that I would I would bend over backwards to get. Everybody else, I would feel like that. This is why it's so strange is because after three, it could be one of six guys and. I'm sitting here saying I would rather move back and let everybody else fight about it, you know, mm -hmm. because I probably still get one of the two guys that I, is on my board still. You know who I'm really wanting that's probably not in our in the cards for us. First of all, I've talked about Nick Smith Jr. I, I like him. Um, Any Arkansas player, I'm all oh, yes, give me him. Yes, it's um, what's his name's twin? Chris Murray. How is yeah, it yeah, that yeah. Chris Murray is still ranked at 27th on this board? Um, is he not as good as Kyle? Is he? He's a little bit slower. He's um, a little bit less polished as far as scoring um, than his brother. But here's the thing about it is that okay. like, I, I, I think people compare him to his brother, and that's why he's dropped so far. Because if you're comparing him to his brother, you see somebody that's missing a few things. But if you're comparing him to the rest of the draft class – I personally think he should be picked around like 17, like the Poku spot, you know, like the trade man spot, you know, like that. that's a spot that I look at, at he, him that's at. That's his brother's name, not Kyle. But so my, 
my thing is uh, shouldn't his value be increased by what his brother was able to show this year or is that irrelevant it like, depends man think about it like, like this like we were talking about the new cba and you're like um it's going to increase the value of polished rookies or at least people players who are a little bit older and can contribute right away um i would say after watching keegan play that you got to think chris is is prepared yeah like for the nba yeah. he's been working out nba workouts he's got size he's got length um his stats aren't bad although like you're saying not the best but 20 points a game i mean you'd like him to shoot a little higher than 33 percent from deep but eight rebounds 1.2 blocks the nice thing is he's left-handed which gives you a slight advantage in um on offense in the nba uh, in any league really but i think that like that could be a real advantage sure well, i mean i hope we get him but i i mean somebody's gonna be really happy with him i think i i think there's no doubt in my mind that he has a, a future in the NBA. Um, I would love for us to have a second round pick if we had to trade up and get him. I would love to see that um, because it's just less money guaranteed. Um, I would also like to see us if we had an opportunity to maybe um, pick up like a player. Okay, so let's just say like for shits and giggles right now, we did get the number fourth pick. And then we traded back to a team with the number seventh pick, right? So we dropped three spots back. They gave us a 24th pick, 25th pick, something like that, you know, in mm -hmm. exchange. We were able to take that and pick Kyle and Anthony Black. I would be, I would be beyond. Yeah, Chris. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, but, um, Murray. That'd be crazy. Yeah. I, to me, like, there's certain values like that that I would look at and be like, yeah, that, that would be totally worth it because, um, yeah, man, it's it's different money. I think we'd end up losing like four million dollars in that process, but to me, that doesn't matter when you get two rookies that would be like that. I love it, bro. Um, all so, right, so Carson, you're asking about Anthony Black, and the reality is, and this is embarrassing to admit, but I actually don't know Anthony Black's game very well. I've noticed him climbing the so draft. Good. So um, good. I've noticed that like people will give him like uh, comps to like a Lamelo kind of thing. Um. So you guys tell me, what do you guys think? You think if we got top four that we would go for Anthony Black? Is he the type of like playmaker that we're trying well, to build again, this team around? Again, it's that is the, what I'm saying is that there's so many players at four that could go there. Like it could be Anthony Black, it could be one of the Thompson twins, it could be you know it could go any way, any direction, man. I've never seen a a four through 12 pick like this before like it's gonna be it's all over the board bro i think you lost your bro. all over the board froze up i think that's what's going on i hate to talk over you if you're still talking but i figured oops it looks like we lost our internet you there mark all right Sorry, guys. It looks like he might have paused, went to timeout, internet in jail. Um, no, I I think that this is going to be a really interesting um, pick for us. I, I hope we can move up on it, and the reason I hope we can move up is because I feel like Dallas needs to be punished somehow. <laughs> and this would be a great way for Dallas to be punished. We'll see, though. I don't know. Like... I think the NBA is changing, so I think that there could be a future for what happens with this team. Um, when I say that, I, I mean, this draft pick out of all the last three years or two years of drafts, this draft year is the one that I would say we need the most to hit or need the least to hit. Um, and the reason is, is because you are right when you say um, Carson is at this pick, even if it was a you know top four pick or it, number four pick, it would probably still the player would still come off the bench. Uh, that kind of tells you where this team's at. Uh, this team is still building, yes, but we're at a very uh, crucial situation where um, whoever is coming into this team is going to be coming off the bench. So you're going to have to earn your spot. And this goes back to what I said in the beginning um, of this year was whatever drip pick that we have coming from the first round, I still believe it's going to end up being one of those picks that we end up seeing um, 
in the future. And it could be one of those guys that go to the G League in the beginning. And I'm okay with that. I mean, we, we saw what the G League does for players that go down there and play and learn the system. So I'm more concerned of, of seeing that and what, what can uh, be accomplished like that. Um, let's see what else we got here from you guys. Uh, Maxwell Lewis, uh, lottery at 12. Hey, listen, like I said, there's a lot of different ways, Frank, that this could go. Um, I do think uh, Maxwell um, is one of those guys that we have to keep a very close eye on. I like his stats. I like what he can do. Um, so, and I like his, his, his um, size charts and everything else like that. I mean, phenomenal player. So, I think it's one of those things where we're going to be looking at um, an OKC Tanner. Um, somebody should not have traded for Kyrie. That is right, dude. Dallas is fucked, guys. I mean, I want to say that I, I've never been happier. Um, I mean, as much as I, I I used to watch and appreciate the Dallas Mavericks, I no longer can watch and appreciate. And it just seems wrong to like Luka. So makes me happy that if they don't have Kyrie next year, things are going to be better for us um, in the West. And it's it's almost as if they're going to um, – the Dallas Mavericks is, is, are going to be in like a um, semi-rebuild if they can't get a good player. So um, interesting stuff there for sure. So I don't know. I'm excited about this Oklahoma City Thunder team as we're um, definitely getting to that point where um, we're starting to see what's going to happen um, after – Tonight, Mark and I will have an idea of where our draft pick lands, and then we're going to be starting to focus on um, the different ideas of what Sam Presti could do, whether um, a possibility of a trade-up could be looking at, uh, possibly something like that. So there's a lot of possibilities that I feel that Sam Presti is going to be looking at, and especially when it comes down to breaking up, um, breaking down players and looking at their um, 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 stats, sizes, um, you know, uh, we love to scout players. So we'll be breaking down that for you guys, uh, when the lottery lets us know exactly where we're going to be landing. So, um, I'm pretty stoked for that. I hope that works out well. Um, and I am hoping that we can get, um, listen again, if we end up with a 12th, I'm happy with the 12th guys, because there's a lot of movement that we can do. Um, it still has a lot of value. We could trade it. Um, we could keep it. I, mean, I don't give a shit because it's going to be fun to be able to see how this team builds. But, um, well, I don't think Mark is coming back, guys. So I think we're good. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about with the Thunder before we head out? If not, I appreciate you guys. You guys are good. We love you guys. And if you guys need anything, you guys can always reach out. Mark and I love to talk about Thunder or whatever else. Um, we have a bunch of you guys that we stay in contact with. Um, and it's nice to be able to talk to you guys. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely have a good day and we will talk to you guys.